Are you struggling to keep a good, healthy city? Are you looking for the perfect governor to lead your town to victory? Well, that's going to be what this video is all about. What you need to look out for, you know, in order to run a healthy, productive city. And of course, all importantly, tips on what makes a good governor. We're going to be looking at um, a variety of different things when it comes to the governor, including the right kind of perks for you to be picking. Um, this is a gigantic game, Mountain Blade uh, 2 Bannerlords is a huge game with so many things to think about and it can get absolutely um, very easy to not really know what direction to take your game into. Now I actually had someone within the Discord community comment this question, so this is essentially a video for them, hopefully it does help out um, you guys as well if this video does help if you want to see more content like it hit that like button subscribe to the channel uh, comment your thoughts down below this is actually my 100th video on mountain blade battle so i wanted to do something a little bit special so i figured you know a good old structured video would be the right way to go now micromanaging your towns uh, when you have many towns probably isn't something you're going to be doing but when you very first start out and you've got one town your first town it's so important to get a few things right and there are many things that can help with that now first of all we actually have to understand a town and and what makes a good town a good town otherwise it doesn't matter who we put in it's really not going to matter now prosperity is what matters the more prosperity you have essentially the healthier your city is the more production it's going to be able to produce so if you can take care of you know your pluses and your minuses here increase your pluses reduce your minuses however it is whether that be a settlement issue whether that be you know your local towns whether that be the goods within your market or maybe even a food shortage take care of those small things and the rest of your town will be able to do that now, one thing I should mention, um, I haven't put it in this video necessarily, but there are a lot of good things you can do if you are a kingdom. Now, I'm not assuming you are a kingdom or not a uh, kingdom, which is why I haven't necessarily popped it in this video. But if you are a kingdom, there are a number of very good policies that you can introduce that will increase your loyalty or your food or your security um loyalty is probably the one you want to pay the most attention to having a good loyalty will set your city very well basically if you don't have a decent loyalty within your city there's a chance that it will rebel and there's a lot of different policies that you can introduce that affects loyalty the same with security as well security has a huge impact um, in loyalty so those two together are massively important that can also go for your garrison and, of course, your militia as well, or your militia, as I'm famous for getting wrong. Um, I would lean more into having a higher militia simply because militia don't necessarily cost a lot of money, whereas having a huge garrison, that's going to cost you a awful lot of money to keep up. So if you're trying to play that numbers game and keep, you know, uh, your costs low, having a higher militia is going to pay off later down the line. Of course, if you need to defend it, don't necessarily worry too much about that because you and your army are going to do a better job. Now, the other thing that's going to help you massively, of course, is uh, your your town management. And you'll have this screen whether you are a kingdom or not. And if you are suffering with loyalty, then festival and games are going to be your go-to until you can fix a few of the things that are getting you down. 
Seriously, loyalty is the thing you need to pay the most attention to. Um, and that even includes when it comes to your governor, because your governor has going to have a huge impact on that. If, for instance, you have a Valandian town, you're going to want a governor that is from Valandia, you know, to get all of those benefits that you possibly can. Choosing someone to lead a town of the same culture has benefits just like it would if you took a town of your own culture too as you can see here everyone whether they are a family member or a companion has traits that will affect um, the city it depends what they are of course because everyone is different everyone has leveled up and chosen perks that are different and this game is very good at making passive perks so whether you wanted the plus three for you know your your archers or something like that it may have a a secondary ability and it's those secondary abilities that we need to pay attention to um, if you want to build a perfect governor now, in my opinion, when it comes to the different companions that you can hire, warriors seem to make the best governor. Now, uh, that kind of rings true. You know, historically, you have a strong leader. That means that they can run a decent city, hopefully. Um, but within this game, there's a lot of perks within the single, the double-handed, and the pole arm tree that really help being a governor, have additional bonuses for that. So if you manage to find a companion um, that happens to be a decent warrior, there's a good chance that they'll make a good governor and moreover to that top tip if you visit the arena if you go to the tournament master you can actually select a companion and redo their abilities so let's say you've just hired someone and they have you know really good single-handed combat they don't necessarily have um the perks that you would pick if you was putting it on yourself remember you can't necessarily be a governor um then you can then rewash them redo them and choose the appropriate ones now it does cost money um which does kind of suck but at the same time if you are at the stage where you're micromanaging your first two three four cities they can be really really worth doing so now, that being said, especially because nine times out of ten, it's going to be a companion, maybe even a family member that you've had since birth that you've been raising for this task. What you're looking for is those easy perks, those perks you can actually reach because there's no point thinking, oh, I'm going to pick up that perk, which is, you know, level 200 within two handed weapons. If they're your, that character is just never going to get to that stage. So those beginning perks that you can reach is going to have a massive um, impact on your game. As you can see from this screen, I have huge problems when it comes to my garrisons. And I mean, it is an obscene amount of money that I spend within my garrison. So having a governor that has perks that actually reduces the wages can be a massive thing. So and there's several different perks out there that you can get that will reduce the rage, wages of your garrison and they stack. All importantly, they do stack. So possibly look at picking up those. Now we're going to take a few seconds to actually show you a couple of the perks that I would look to picking up. Now, as you can see, within the one-handed combat tree, only 50 levels in, we have Swift Strike. And the secondary perk there is a plus one to daily militia recruitment if you govern that settlement. So this is a really good one. It's passive. You pop them in and you're going to be getting more militia every single day. Or, of course, just below that, you could be to be blunt. With this, you get a 0.5 daily security bonus to your settlement. Again, it depends which one you want to go for. If you want more security, if you want more militia, both of them are going to equal pretty much the same thing. For me personally, I would go with Swift Strike, but it really is a preference thing on this. Now, luckily, there are many good warriors, especially just for companions within the game that you can pick up. That being said, One-Handed Weapons also has Corpse a Corpse. Now, this is at level 150, so it's hard to get. However, 
If you do get it, and you are the governor, you do get a plus 30 on your garrison limit. And remember, any other one that you pick up, that also stacks as well, increasing your garrison. And the bigger the garrison you have, the more security you have, the more security you have, the more uh, loyalty you have, and you see where we're going here. Or, of course, directly underneath that, you do have a minus 5% to garrison wages. And I did already explain just how messed up my playthrough is because I have got so much wages coming out from my garrison. So this could really help. And again, sticking to that one-handed weapon scheme. United, we stand at level 175. Your governor trait here is a plus 30% to security provided by troops within that garrison. So having a big garrison doubly equals on that having a better security. That will also help your loyalty. And as you can see, one-handed weapons, in my opinion, has a lot when it comes to helping out um, for the governor. But honestly, having a warrior that is capable in one-handed or two-handed weapons comes with buffs because even in two-handed we have other things too like berserker for instance which again reduces your garrison wages by 10 percent and remember this does stack so already if you have those two perks that's a minus 15 percent or alternatively if you get the perk underneath that you actually get a 30 percent build speed to military pro um, projects within your city now projects take a long time to build like seriously a ridiculously long time to build so anything that beads up those speeds up those building products is massive and you can be really surprised where you'll find perks as well. Another one would be riding just 50 levels in. You get a 0.5% daily loyalty bonus put in if you govern that city. And you see all of these little perks, they stack. And there's a lot of them. And they are everywhere within the skill tree. So it doesn't matter where you go. You're going to be finding perks that relate to the governors. And you can very easily and build yourself a companion that you specifically set out to be your golden companion just remember that where they're from and the city that they rule that plays a huge part don't ignore policies if you are in a kingdom and make sure your loyalty is high after that guys i think pretty much the cities take care of themselves so there we have it. That is my rundown on how to build a decent governor for your city. Also, how to manage your city. Well, I've also got other videos on managing your cities and stuff like that, too. So if you're having an issue or you want to know something else, check out the playlist. But until next time, guys, I've been a monk who's been inquisitive curious, and I will see you in the next video real soon. Until then, take it easy and happy gaming.